numbers. Let me see. Oh, okay. There we go. I don't know if you're going to hear my dog in the background or not. Hi, YouTubers. It is me, Tammy D. Shy. Oh, here's the camera. Coming to you with a quick video. Sorry. I haven't met a kennel. I may introduce y'all to him if he pipes down for a second. But anyway, I just want to come to you all with, hey, Latoya, how you doing, girl? I am trying to be a little bit more consistent with my videos. Um, but I have been slowly but surely um, kind of taking out some of my lock extensions. I think I took about three of them out. I'm not replacing them, so if they like come out, if I pull them out, then I haven't really been putting them back in there. But the most recent one I took out, I was really excited about my length. And it's this one. This is all my, excuse my edges, let me slick it back so it can look like I got some hair. But look, that is the one I just took out today, and it is all mine. I'm so excited. It goes right there. So that one is out. Then I took this one out back here. So that's out. And there's one that is here that is out. So I'm slowly but sure, surely it's growing. My hair is growing and I'm loving the length. So, oh, thank you. Yes, girl, my hair is growing. Thank you, Quan Marie. So I got hot. Ooh, she's Thank you, Kwame Maurice. Yes, my hair is growing beautifully. Yes, Miss Latoya, it is growing. So like I said in my last video, if you choose to do lock extensions, by all means do so. Your hair will still grow, as you can see. I don't know if y'all remember, but when I before I started this set, I had shaved my hair completely off. I think it's the video when I had on like a peach dress and like a bob wig. There's a, there's a small clip in there where I was like, I took the wig off and you can see my bald head. So I started with like no hair, I think two years ago. I think this is year three now. I don't know, you have to check back. I have to check back on my videos and see exactly where I'm at. But I think this is year three. Yes, yes, you remember. <laughs> I had no hair. I just, I, I just shaved it all off because the set I had before this one, I had like bleached it to death. The hair got ate up and I was just like, forget it. Let me just start completely over. So I shaved everything off and look where I'm at now. Started from the bottom now I'm here. And what you say, Maurice? I'm getting my lock extensions uh, next installed. So I'm excited. Any advice on first timers with lock extensions? Yes. Um, first timer with lock extensions. Uh Make sure whoever you're going to, they actually know what they're doing because I see a lot of cases where a lot of locks slip out and they shouldn't be slipping out that early if they're secured properly. So that's one thing. And as far as maintenance, um, I'm not even good on with it. I, they say sleep in a satin bonnet or something like that or get you a satin pillowcase so that your hair doesn't dry out. Um, that's a good thing to do to help keep in moisture. But you also want to remember to treat them like they're your hair, do not dye them, over dye them or over process. He said, I meant next month. I'm getting... Oh, okay, it's okay. <laughs> I understood, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, um, treat them like your real hair because they will mimic the same as your hair, real hair as far as like if you over process them with dye, um, they'll get ate up. You know, the dye will eat them up or the bleach will eat them up. Um, if you over manipulate them, sometimes they will lose their shape or lose their form. Um, if you like, you know, ring them. I know this thing that said squeeze it instead of ringing them. Because if you ring them, sometimes you'll like um, thin them out in certain areas and weaken them. So um, that's that's something that I would keep in mind. So definitely um, keep them moisturized. I just use water and oil. That's all I really use. Honestly, I just spray my hair with water and I just put oil on top of that because the water moisturizes it and the oil after you put the water on there seals it in. So definitely continue to moisturize your hair and your lock extensions because that, you know, those locks are kind of pulling, you know, the moisture from your hair because they're, well, I don't know if that's true because they're like, it's not real hair, but anyway, just moisturize your scalp and also moisturize your lock extensions and helps them, it keeps them from looking like all, um, 
dry and, and stuff like that. So yeah. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting hot back here. It's light. But yeah, as you can see, my hair is growing beautifully. You're welcome. And enjoy your lock extensions. Enjoy your process. Um, don't let anybody tell you different. Everybody's journey is different. So um, it doesn't mean yours is any less significant because you choose to start a different way from everybody else. I know it's a lot of hair police out there, you know, started from the bottom type people out there. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is a journey as well. Your lock extensions are a journey. I still had to do a lot of maintenance. I still had to do a lot of caring for these. I still had to do a lot. Like there's literally probably blood, sweat, and tears in these lock extensions because I hand made them myself. I put them in myself and I maintain them for the most part myself. Um, every now and again, I'll have somebody else do it. But for the most part, um, I maintained it myself. I made sure that my hair is also taken care of. And that's another thing, Maurice. Make sure that you don't neglect your hair with these lock extensions. I know sometimes uh, we kind of, you know, like when I used to wear weaves and wigs, my problem was I never really cared for my hair. I just needed enough hair to make sure I had enough to sew in or glue it down or something like that. But now I've been really making sure that I'm also caring for my hair in addition to these lock extensions, which is why... I got a little length. <laughs> so excited. So yeah, my hair is growing beautifully. I just wanted to chime in or stop in and, and show you all what I'm working with here. So if y'all have any more questions, feel free. If you want me to make a video on something, let me know. I'm sorry, this light. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, I got to get a ring light. Oh, sorry. Now you can't see me. Oh, God. I'm sweating. But anyway... If you have any questions or if you want me to make a video about something in particular, feel free to ask me and I ask me and I will. Um, let's see what else is it. I think somebody asked me a question on one of my previous videos. Uh, let's see. Uh, was it this one? So let me see. Um, not really so, but if you want to know where to get lock extension hair, um, I suggest making styles. Uh, I think it's www.maconstyles.com. Um, they have really good quality hair. I've used uh, their hair a couple times for clients when I was making lock extensions. Um, again, I still have the Lord and Cliff hair, but the people I used to order from, they changed the quality of their hair since I've done mine. So I do not use them anymore. And I recommend um, also, you know, supporting a black owned business. They're really good with their shipping. Um, the hair is good quality. And I would suggest using them. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's all I got as far as my hair. I just really wanted to show y'all the length that I'm having. Like I still am, um, I'm still keeping the other ones in. Like I just, I've gotten to the point where I just don't feel like repairing anymore. So if I over manipulate them, if one comes out, I may put it back in depending on where the breaking point was. But if not, then I'll just leave it and just kind of let my hair come on out. But I'm so proud of this for y'all. Look at this. Ew. Yeah, I see that. Look at that in comparison to the length of the, the, length of the other ones. So it's getting there. Your girl is getting there. I got a little length on me. So again, just take care of your hair. Enjoy your journey and um happy locking <laughs> y'all have a good one stay tuned stay blessed i'm trying to come on here with more content i wonder if i should start doing other stuff on my channel i don't want to do anything that's inauthentic but um my business is back up and running um it kind of slowed down a little bit even prior to covid you know so but now it's back up and running i have my properties listed i'm gonna put it in the description box um if y'all looking for some real estate out here in, uh, where is it? Arkansas. Well, I'm in Florida. I live in Florida now, but my property is in Arkansas. It's in Hot Springs Village area. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll make a separate video on that. But anyway, this is about locks. Um, how often can you style your own hair with new lock extensions? Um, as long as your lock extensions are securely put in from day one, you can do whatever you want, however you want. So you can style it as often as you want. Just keep in mind that when you do style it, just keep your hair 
Um, as a Sandra point, don't do any over pulling, no extra tightening or anything like that because you still want a healthy base for your lock extensions. So as long as your lock extensions are put in properly, you can style your hair as often as you want. If the person does it right, you can also wash your hair. You can go swimming. You can do all of that stuff because you're not, um, I don't know which, which method you're using. I personally, if you look at my channel, I, I've had two different methods. I had the wrapping method and I uh, later went to the crochet method. I definitely prefer the crochet method. To me, it's lighter and the hair is more, um, it's locked in better when you tangle it with this, the, the crochet hook. So if it's put in properly, you can style your hair as often as you like. Just keep in mind that it is attached to your hair and you don't want to overwork your hair to cause any thinning, any breakage or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Any more questions? I like these. Oh, it's going to be a long video. Hopefully I watch it. Um, what else? Because I have a lot of other videos that's on my channel that talks about, you know, lock extensions, how to treat them. Um, they really do mimic your hair. They will break off just like real hair. They'll um, take in dye if it's human hair, like real hair. Um, and if you overprocess it, they will get, um, they'll start to deteriorate or disintegrate or whatever the word is um, when you bleach it too much, which is what I did with my last set. So for this one, uh, I haven't used any bleach. I have colored it a few times. I just got tired of doing it. So I haven't done it um, since. Um, do they itch a lot? If so, what helps with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, when I first got my lock extension, it felt like my head was on fire. It felt like I had like little needles. I don't know if it's because the when you use processed hair, I don't know if it's because whatever they process it with irritates your scalp or it's just because something foreign is on your head and it's doing more than it normally would if it was just, you know, your natural hair. Um, again, I would suggest using oil and water. Uh, I'm not a big products person. I don't have like 10, 15 things that I use. Honestly, I just got a water uh, bottle, a little spray bottle with water, and I spray that directly on my scalp. And I use Tropical Roots um, uh, growth oil, the hairspray oil, and I put that on my scalp. And for me, that works. Um, some people use uh, like tea tree oils, uh, something with a menthol base in it or something. I think it's menthol. Don't quote me on that but something that tingles your scalp. I don't do all that stuff. I don't feel like it. I just use water and oil. That's it. I don't have a whole bunch of products. And when I wash it, <laughs> I'm a little ashamed, uh, but not really. When I wash it, I use dishwashing liquid. Yes, I do. <laughs> I was buying shampoos and stuff like that, but I started using dishwashing liquid like Dawn and Ajax, but the I work out a lot and then it just wasn't getting that you know, that sweat smell out. So then I would wash it. So now what I do is I wash it with the dishwashing liquid first and then I go over it with shampoo. Does it strip it? Yeah. Um, but again, you put moisture back into it by adding water and oil. That works for me. Everybody's head is different. That's just what I do. Oh, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. Akasha. I ain't going to say the rest of it because I don't know, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Akasha. I am trying to be more consistent with these videos. I have got me, um, I've been blessed to purchase a home through this pandemic. And that's what I wanted to also say. I just quit testimony. You know, a lot of people are going through a lot, but I was able to, you know, get a great space and that way I can film more and stuff like that. So I've been blessed to purchase a home during this pandemic. So now I can kind of upload more and, and give you all more content. I want to edit and stuff, but I don't feel like doing that either. I just want to get on here and talk, honestly. But um, I thank y'all so much for watching my channel and for listening to me ramble sometimes and for actually, you know, appreciating the content that I put on here. Oh, uh, Maurice, you said, I hear you can detox your lock extensions with apple cider vinegar to prevent itching. itching. Do you really think that works? Um, Probably. What that okay, so from what I understand is that the ACV rinse really takes out the buildup from your locks. So if your buildup is what's causing that itching, then yeah. Um, also maybe it may cleanse the scalp some and remove it because really it gets to the lock. So I, I don't know if it's like directly on the scalp. So I'm I'm assuming any type of cleanser like that would help with um itching. Uh it probably does work. I'm not gonna say it doesn't. I mean 
Baking soda cleans, apple cider vinegar cleans. So if it cleans, you know, surfaces, stoves and stuff like that, then I'm pretty sure it can clean your scalp too and kind of reduce the amount of itching that you experience with or without lock extensions. So I don't, um, I know that you don't do that that often or you shouldn't do it that often. Girl, I don't blame you. This is my fourth and final lock journey. Uh, Akasha says she's on her fifth and final lock journey. Girl, I know I'm on my fourth and final lock journey. So, and I don't know if you've seen my earlier part, Akasha, but this is my, I'm so proud of this little one right here. It's, it's, it's growing very nicely. So I'm on my fourth and final lock journey. I do not plan on doing this again. I am enjoying my process thus far and I love it. I, this is the best decision I made with my hair. I tell people that all the time, um, whether you choose lock extensions or you choose to go the traditional route without using any extensions, whatever you do, but locking for me has been the best thing that I've done for my hair. Hands down. People kind of look at you different too. Like when you go to work, they're like, oh, is she supposed to sold you or somebody like that? I'm like, maybe today, depending on how I feel. But um, I don't know. I, I just enjoy it. I enjoy having locks. I kind of... I need to start doing more stuff with it, but usually I just don't because it's the kind of, to me, it's the kind of um, hairstyle in a sense to where when it's not done, it's still done, you know? So I, I just enjoy that. But yeah, oh, this video almost 20 minutes. I'm going to get off of here, y'all. Um, feel free to, I try to answer everybody's questions, everybody's comments. If you want me to make a video about something, um, reattaching a lock or something like that, feel free to let me know. Um, go down in the comments. And my youngest daughter is locking her hair for the first time. She's going to love it. I think she's going to love it. I'm telling you, it's, it's for me, it's been like the best experience that I've had with my hair. I don't stress about it. I don't spend a lot of money because back in the day when I was wearing wigs and weaves, I was buying bundle before bundles even was a thing i was buying a little packs of hair and all that kind of stuff and <sighs> maintenance and then it's it was just too much but locking is a great thing so your daughter is gonna love it i think she's gonna love it and plus that she's starting young oh my god i wish i would have had an appreciation for locks when i was younger um i would have started natural years 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 ago but i figured since i was like old i was like 30 when i first started wanting to lock my hair i really didn't want to wait till i was 50 to have some length because it takes about 10 years to get some you know to get length so i, I just didn't want to do that oh she's gonna be excited i'm excited for her i know they're gonna be beautiful I'm nervous and excited at the same time to get my lock extensions because I had my Afro hair for four years and it's still something new for me. Now, if you're one of those people who really adores loose, natural hair, then you might want to take a step back and think about it, you know, because for whatever reason, like I, me, I never got into the whole loose, natural thing. I didn't, I didn't know what to do with my hair then. Um, I'm, I'm better able to style it now. Like my sister, she's a loose natural. Like she locks her hair for like five months and she was like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. So she calmed it out and now she's a loose, she's back to her loose natural. So that's what she loves. Um, so if, if you're that, you know, if you really love loose natural, then I can understand, you know, the, the change, you know, that you'll have to undergo. But let me tell you something about locks. I follow a lot of locticians on my Instagram. Having locks are, they're so versatile. Anything that you can do with straight hair, like straight bundles or whatever, you can do with locks. You can wave them. You can curl them. You can, um, what was what that word? Feather them. You know, if you do it right and have layers in your locks, you can feather them. Um, put them up in ponytails, all kinds of styles. These beautiful regal styles that you can do. Like I follow all kinds of people who do beautiful styles. So if you're worried about transitioning from loose natural for you know styling options trust me you will be able to get that and then some with locks so or just the same amount she said i wish i had started young. yeah me too i wish i had started my locks young akasha says i wish i had started when i was 18 my youngest is 16 me too if you welcome my reese if I, I wish i could have started when i was like 10 my locks would have naturally been this long if i had started when i was like 10 but back in the day i didn't have an appreciation for them. i just didn't know 
Um, Cause you know, they, back they had stereotypes. Oh, they're dirty. They smell and all that kind of stuff. And that, I don't know what, maybe it came from white people. I don't know where it came from because a lot of the people I see with locks, they keep them well-maintained. They're not dirty. They always smell fruity, <laughs> you know, because they like um, the products and all that kind of stuff. But I absolutely love having locks. Like, I just, I feel so, I don't know, I feel like I'm me, you know, I, I feel good about it. And the fact that, you know, they, my, my real one is growing too. I can't wait till it gets. Now, I'll leave these in for a long time, but depending on what length mine get to, maybe shoulder blade-ish, I may take them out or I just may keep them. I don't know. But as long as my hair is growing healthy with these lock extensions, I have no intentions of taking them out. As long as I'm not compromising the strength of my own hair, then I just have no intention of taking them out. And so far, I have it. Like, my edges, they ain't never been all that hot. But, like, when I scoot it back a little bit, I still got So they just curl up. They just really curl up. Like, I do have hair. You know what I'm saying? They just they curl up. See that? Look at that. But, yeah, I got edges and stuff. They just, they just curl up. I don't mind that either. So, ah! Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, girl. I worked hard on these bad boys. That's what I say. Don't let nobody tell you this ain't a journey because it is. I did a lot of repairing in my day. I'm just at the point where I'm tired. So, but thank you. I love them. I get compliments on them all the time. Um, people don't know. And if they do know, I really don't care. It's public information. You know, I got videos and videos of, of me having these lock extensions and stuff like that. So, it's all good. I don't care. People know. I love them. What else should I got? This is fun. I need to do more lives and stuff like that. That is because sometimes I don't feel like editing and all that kind of stuff. People do a really good job on this, these YouTube channels with the edit, editing and stuff like that. I'm like, man. I mean, I got the software. It's just the... Whew, it's lazy. Lazy, lazy. But yeah, this is fun, y'all. What else? Any more questions? I know Akasha, your daughter's going to love her hair. She's going to have an appreciation for it. And I feel like to um, whether you start natural or whether you start with lock extensions, like you will develop, you will develop an appreciation for self. Life teaches you whatever it needs to teach you. But when you, you know, come into your own with your, your locks, I think that's a another level of appreciation too. What'd you say, Quan? I said, I'm starting too late <laughs> to, I'm 28 years old and been wanting lock extensions since I was 17. I understand. I think I watched your video. Girl, yeah, keep watching them, girl. Get them views up for me. <laughs> but yeah, I know, I, like I said, I started when I was 30 and it takes a lot of time to get length depending on how your hair grows. So I kind of wanted to bypass that stage because listen, if Jesus come back tomorrow, I want to make sure I got some length today. All okay? right? So that's what I did. <laughs> I want length now. And I got it. And I don't regret it. So, yeah. But had I started earlier, like when I was 10 or something and, and knew about lock extensions, I mean, and knew about neck and, and had an appreciation for locks, I would have started when I was like 10. I would be like, my, lock my hair. But I didn't I didn't really grow to appreciate them because I was so stuck in, you know, frying and dyeing my hair at the time, making it fall out that I just I didn't I didn't know. So now that I know, I, I won't go back to anything else. But yeah, you tomorrow ain't promise. I'll get you some length today. Oh, I need to make it a slogan. Hey, you heard it here first. Tomorrow, tomorrow's not promise. So get length the length that you want today. So that's what I did. <laughs> I don't blame you because my brothers, they started with, they're young though. Two of my brothers got their hair locked. Uh, one of my sisters, two of my sisters has, a, has her, has their hair locked. So I love it. I absolutely love it. What else y'all got for me? Ooh, 23 minutes. I hope y'all watch this video, but sometimes I see people on here going for like an hour talking about like content about, um, uh, I don't know, these reality shows. And I kind of watch some of them because I'd be bored, but yeah. What else? Um, I think that's about it. People used to tell me that you had to cut your hair when you don't want them. No, you do not have to cut your hair if you do not want lock extensions. That's what I was told too. When I first started doing my lock extensions, people were like, you got to cut them out and stuff like that. 
but you do not. Thank you, Audrey. Hi. Thank you. That's what people told me, too, that you had to cut them out. Um, I don't know how people are installing them, but for me, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's why you didn't do it back in the day. For me, when I first started, I did the wrapping method. And thank you, I do. And with the wrapping method, I couldn't find where my hair was because you're literally taking your um, you're, you're taking your hair and you're wrapping it with other hair. So I didn't know where my hair started. So in those instances, I can see why people would cut it because you just unless you just cut it from the wrap part or something like that. I just didn't know where my hair was within the wrapping um, the wrapping of the lock. But when I crocheted it. I, uh, I kind of know where I joined mine at and I just take the little crochet hook and I just pop it out. Like I can just pop them out, pop them out, pop them out. So it just depends on how on who puts your locks in. It's in my first set, I was able to comb them out. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing. Yeah, people, um, I learned that too by watching YouTube that you can comb your locks out no matter how long they've been in. You're going to lose a lot of hair because, of course, that's hair that was going to shed anyway, but it's just getting trapped into that lock. So, yeah, people use conditioner. They saturate it with conditioner. And they take like a, a rat tail comb. They just start picking out the end and just keep going and going and going like that until you get back to your loose natural. Do I create locks and sell them? I did at one point. And I don't know how to, one day I'm going to figure out how to show y'all my screen so I can show y'all some of the pictures that I had. Um, I, I did make um, locks and, and to sell them, but I just, whew, it is very tedious and time consuming. With the, and at the time I just had a lot going on um, and I just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, I'm still on hiatus. I may, I may get back into it, but it's just a lot to do. Yeah. You say, Audrey, your first set, you cut them out. Yeah. Second set, you call them out. Yeah. It's good to know knowledge is power. When you know, you know, uh, when you're informed, then you can make different decisions. And when I first got locks, people, that's, that was a going thing. You can't get rid of them unless you cut them. You know, you got to start all over. And, you know, that's why people didn't want to do it. Um, but now I know that you can condition your locks because it's still hair. It's not this... Um, it doesn't transform into anything. It's hair. So you can still saturate it. What I've seen is people saturated with conditioner and comb them out. So, yes, the second set, I love the crochet method. Love, love the crochet method for many, many reasons. But more importantly, to me, they are lighter and they look more natural. Um, I can always tell. Maybe because it's because I have them or I've been doing them or I know how to do them. I can always tell the wrapping method because you it's it's an unnatural pattern. Oops. I'm gonna wake up my sister. But it's an unnatural, it's an unnatural pattern because it's going like this. And you can tell, and some of it's shiny too, you know, and some people don't even use um I come to find out some people don't even use human hair when they do that. So, like, if you're going to get any kind of extensions, please, uh, from the scalp. Yes, it does. And if you look back at some, and that's another reason why I took, because I did it twice. I had the wrapping method twice. And I could tell as my hair grew out, the difference between the way my hair was growing and the lock extension. And if you got close enough, you could tell it too. I would not, I did not want people to get close on my head because I'm like, God, they're going to be able to see it. But now girl, people be like this and they still can't tell. Look at this. I don't know if y'all can see it. People be so close on my head, like standing in the line and stuff. Look at this. Can't tell, can you? Look at that. So now... I don't care if people are standing over my head in a line or something like that. They can look because they just can't tell. But when you have the wrapping method, to me, you can just tell. Because like I said, it's an unnatural pattern. I don't like when people put large locks. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Large locks on small hair spaces. I learned that from Damien. I think it's Damien Walter. Locks to hair ratio. 
When you do that, you can kiss your piece of hair goodbye because that lock is going to outweigh that little patch of hair. And then as it grows out, you're going to have this thin little lock with this fat lock extension. And that looks terrible. What would you say? I have some human hair dyed purple. I want to add it to my hair. Yeah, if you're going to add any kind of hair with any kind of lock extension, um, please make sure it's human. I know some people do like a synthetic blend. Uh, that's another reason why I took the first set of, yeah, they do damage people hair. Um, the first set of lock extensions I had put in, I had bought, I'm so mad. I had bought so many, I'm sorry, I got to call my sister to wake her up for work. But I had put so many, um, hey, you up? All right, bye. When I, when I did my first um, set of lock extensions, I had bought the Vivica Fox Afro Kinky Hair. It said 100% human hair. No, it said 100% human. Then it said like human hair quality or something like that. I'm like, what you mean quality? Either it is or it is not. Come to find out that was like a synthetic blend. I was not. Big. Oh, purple is going to be super cute. Let me tell you, purples and blues for some reason to me, make really beautiful hair colors. I did, there's a video, I did my tips purple. Like I think purple and blues, like a like a deep purple, that kind of purple that you see when you hit the sunlight and you're just like, oh, oh that's a pleasant surprise. Those are beautiful. I did my, I did my tips purple in a previous video. I'm not sure if y'all can find it, but yeah. Purple is gonna be beautiful. Yes, you're right, Audrey, it's gonna be so cute. Purples and blues and like deep reds, they look really good on locks. Shoe burgundies, I haven't even seen the pink. I ain't, I ain't ready for all that yet, but yeah. I haven't even seen the pink on there and it looks good, but I ain't ready for all that. But purple is definitely cute. What else? Does it make a difference purchasing already made locks and getting them installed or getting the locks made the same day? Um. Okay, let me make sure I understand. So does it make a difference? Quan says, does it make a difference purchasing already made locks, getting them installed or getting the locks made same day as the install? Um, it really doesn't matter. You can have your locks made however far in advance you want to. The, the thing is, is what um, I think it was Audrey mentioned was your lock to hair ratio. That's what's important. So no matter when you have your locks made, as long as you get them and they're ready to install, you need to make sure that you part your hair or section your hair to where it's going to um, fit the length of that lock or the, the girth of that lock as it grows out. So you kind of got to guesstimate. And what I used to do is I used to take like a piece of my hair, twist it a little bit to see how thick it would get if I twisted it. And to me, that would give me an indication of whether or not it was not enough hair or too much. Um, so it doesn't matter if you buy them pre-made, get them installed later, or get them made the same day as the install. Either way, whoever makes them and whoever puts them in, like if they're already made, whoever puts them in needs to see, okay, the lock is this big, so I need to make the section of the hair this big. So they just have to make sure the lock to hair ratio is uh, good. Price cost. Oh yeah, yeah. It costs a lot to do lock extensions. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm probably one of the cheapest that I've seen because I did my research before I started charging people for them, and that's actually what made me get better is actually doing them for other people. But they are very, very expensive, and some people are just jumping into the lock extensions because it's a lucrative business, not because they know what they're doing. Because I've seen many cases where people's locks are falling out the same day or. They just look terrible or they're like falling apart. Like the actual lock is like not firm and stuff like that. So I, I, I advise you, like it's a very lucrative business. Like it's really good money. Like it really, really is. I ain't even going front. Like <laughs> it's really good money. Like you, if you get enough clientele, like that can be your job. I'm, you know, if you got that entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit about you, or even if you just wanted to do it on the side, because that's what I was doing. I was going to work full time, school full time. 
and still making lock extensions. And it is really good money. So I'll just say that. Just do right by people because some folks just jump in and, you know, start making them because they can. And some people are desperate, you know, because they really want to change their hair. They really want something that's more functional for them. And they, you know, find people who are a little bit cheaper and, you know, kind of get screwed over sometimes. And sometimes the people who charge as much, I mean, it just depends on who you go to. There are some really good people out here that, 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 um, that does them. <laughs> you made three sets. Oh yes. Yeah. I, I know that feeling. I know that feeling making them. I know that's going to be pretty too. Oh, and you do an ombre. That's nice. You should, I, I, I would suggest getting to that, get into the lock extension business, especially if you're doing ombre. I see a few people offering that, but I see a lot of people just opting to dye them. But I think the ombre is probably a better option if you like know what colors you want. Um, I, I would say I, I like the ombre idea. I just make sure like if for a person choosing ombre, I would just make sure that you want those colors for a while. Um, because if you try to switch the colors, now are you buying the hair, the different colors or dyeing it to make it ombre? So are you dyeing it to make it ombre or are you buying different color hair and putting them together? Yes, I made about 40. Oh, okay. Made about 40. I know that's pretty. Those would be pretty. Well, however you're doing it, just, yeah. I, I like the ombre idea. I think that's a good idea. If I ever decide to do color again, I'll probably use, I'm going to get the dye. Oh, okay, I'm going to dye the top afterwards, gotcha. Whatever color I do, or however I choose to color my hair the next time, I'm going to probably use some chalk or something, something that's less evasive, because I ran to Sally's way too many times in my day. Ooh, 30 and 1B. Oh my God, that was my color, boy. I love 30 and 1B. I used to get like, was it 27, 30, 27, 1B or something like that. I used to do all kinds of colors. That's when I was doing wigs and weaves, but with these um, lock extensions, I went on like a blonde binge the last time. I think the last color I put in here was like reddish or something like that. Yeah, it was cute. And 30 and 1B is gonna be super cute. Those colors complement each other really well. My colors are black, or excuse me, dark auburn, chestnut brown. Ooh, that's going to be really pretty. Well, that's going to be nice, Quan. Those are some nice colors. I do. My email is, actually, let me just type it in here. Let's see. Yes, that's my email, tammydshine at gmail.com. Just hit me up for any additional questions. Ask me what you like. I'm trying to think what else I could show y'all on here. I kind of want to show y'all, like, if, okay, if you have um, a weak point in your lock, we'll just do that real quick. If you have a weak point on your lock where it feels a little thin or something like that, you want to just take it out. Let's see if I can find one. One thing I learned is that you need to know how to repair your own lock because you don't want to pay somebody a whole bunch of money for something that you can do yourself. Or just for like maintenance purposes, you know what I mean? Yeah, that auburn is going to be nice. Chestnut brown, auburn. Say, for instance, well, it really didn't have to be loose. So, say, for instance, I just want to take this out. I'm just going to pull it. I don't know where it's going to break. So, I just pull it apart. It's not the end of the world. This is what... Uh oh Okay, it might be because I lost my... Uh, here's my crochet. Did I just show y'all? Wow, how do I lose my own crochet hook? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. So, say for instance, your lock breaks. Instance, your lock breaks. This is what I do I take my lock extension. This is a 0.5, but I use a 0 0.6, 0 0.60 millimeters. That is the best one. It really grabs the hair and, and locks it in. 
But what I do is I just take my lock extension and I go to the very tip of it. I just loosen it up to get some more frayed hair. Just loosen it up. Just kind of get a little extra hair out there. So you see that? See how there's more hair? I do the same thing with the piece that comes off the piece that came off just loosen it up so what this does is when you is it true that salt water you know i've heard that he said uh akasha said is it true that salt water will lock your hair faster honestly i've heard that but i don't know only thing i know for sure is time some people's hair it just takes six months to a year to lock and that's just what it is you know what i mean I don't know if there's anything that can expedite that, but your hair has to go through its own natural budding process, whether you have lock extensions or not. Like even with this, these lock extensions, my hair still had to go through its own budding process. So it is locked, locked. You know what I mean? With Even without the lock extensions, I'm locked. So it, it just has to go through it. So I don't know if salt water expedites it or not, but I have heard that, but I don't know that to be true for myself. So once you get the two frayed ends like that, you're going to overlap it. And what you want to do is where it starts to lock, you want to put those just beneath each other. That way those frayed hairs can get into the locked part and at the bottom. You don't want to do it like this because it's going to be loose right there. You want to put it just above and below where it starts to lock. Yeah, it, yeah that's what I've learned. It has to go through its natural budding process no matter what you do. It just does, you know? And you just take your hook, sorry, I'm big fingers in the way, and just crochet it back in there. I need to order me a 0. 0.6, but I've been lazy on that too. But yeah. So this is just to show y'all what to do just in case you need to repair it. If you have any extra hair, just pull it out and just pull in. And I just go side to side, and as I'm going side to side, I turn it like this. I'm not doing this for a living right now. Um, <clears throat> I could, but I just, oh God. My fingers be toe up. Do you hear me? Toe up. Like, I stabbed myself so many times. The crochet hook got stuck in my finger so many times. Oh, my God, it was painful. But I, I've been thinking about it lately, but I don't currently do it for a living. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And as I'm crocheting, I am turning, turning, turning. And I'm just going like this, side to side. Because as I'm pulling back, I don't know if you can hear it. Crochet, it hooks it. You see that? Back in there. So fret knot. Get you a crochet hook, carry it with you if you need to, because sometimes, regardless of how the person puts the lock, lock extensions in, over time, like I said, they will mimic real hair. They go through wear and tear just like real hair, and it's possible they can come out just like real hair. That's nobody's fault. It's just time. So if that happens, carry you a crochet hook and put it back in now. And it's okay. All is not lost. Like, even when I first made these, They've um, they pretty much like they have their own character now. When I first made them, they were really cylindrical. They were really uniform, and now over time, they're lumpy, they're bumpy. You know, they that like I said, they mimic the real locks. So, yeah, I should brought my fan in here. How long have I been on this fan? RJ, what did I say? <laughs> I don't even know what I just said. What did I say here? <clears throat> Quan said, so the stylist I'm going to to get my locks done says he doesn't make lock extension. He just installed pre-made ones for clients. No, don't be scared and don't run away because that is what I was doing. I was making lock extensions. Oh, yes, Audrey, it hurts. <laughs> But no, I was making lock extensions for people to be to install them because it's time consuming and it's tedious. So some people don't want to do both. Some people would either rather make them, which is me, because I've installed them before on my head and on somebody else's head. Oh, I could not stand it. 
I could not stand it. So the only thing I do is make, well, I used to, I'm still on hiatus, but I just used to make them for people. Why what, Audrey? Why I don't make them or what's the question? But no, don't be scared and run away. Some people, that's just what they choose to do. And some people are better at it. Some people don't know how to make. Um... Oh, yeah, I couldn't. Oh, Because it, it, it's um, it's a long process. And at the time, I was standing up. I didn't sit down. I think my ankles started to swell. My feet were swelling and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, making and installing is too much for me. I would rather do one or the other. And I prefer to make them as opposed to install them. Um, because when you install them, again, there's a whole lock to hair ratio. Um, there's a party. There's to make sure they have enough hair to fit all the locks. You know, there's in the, there's the styling afterwards. So it's a lot to install, style, and make. So me personally, I just would rather make them, sell them, and then let the person find somebody who actually knows what they're doing to put in there. Like this one young lady on my channel, I can't remember which video it is. Um, I made her lock extensions and she went and had somebody put them in. And they look great. They look absolutely great. Of course, you have to have good quality locks. Which she did because I made them. <laughs> so, yeah. What's a good size crochet hook for the crochet method? Yeah, it's a lot, Audrey. It's a lot. But some people, hey, that's why they charge the big bucks. Honestly, that's why they charge the big bucks. And I, I, and I see why. I see why. The best crochet hook you can get, in my opinion, is a 0 0.60 mm. And you can find those on Amazon. Um, I, I don't see them in the stores for some reason. Like I went to Michael's before and I didn't see a 0.6. So if you can find a 0.6, that is the perfect one to me to do any size lock extension because it really pulls in the hair and, and really makes it tight. Yeah, you pray about it. Yes, the Lord will answer your prayer. <laughs> Tell God to bless that person's hands to, to part it right. But yeah, you shouldn't be scared about that. Some people choose to do one or the other. Some people are better at doing one or the other. And for some people, it's just less time consuming to do one or the other as opposed to both. So yeah, get you a 0. 0.6. Like I said, this is a 0. 0.5. And the only reason I got this is because my 0. 0.6 broke. So my hook broke. So get you a 0 0.60 mm. Those are the best, in my opinion. If you, if people aren't afraid to tell you the tools that they use, most lock uh, people that make lock extensions, they use the 0 0.60. Where was he? Yeah, 0 0.60 mm. A lot of them use that one. A lot of people don't like to tell you that because I guess that's how they make your money. But I'm all for people trying to make their own money. So. 0 0.600, oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.60 mm millimeters. Can I tell the difference in what? And the 0 0.6 and the 0.5? Audrey, you can tell the difference. Is that what you mean, to tell the difference in the tool? Because if that's what you're referring to, yes. For some reason, a 0 0.6 is sharper than any of the other ones that I've used. And that is the one that got stuck in my hand Every single time. Like my whole thumb, I was praying I didn't have to go get a new thumb. Like it didn't fall off or something because that joker would just every time. I was saying you can tell the difference. Yes, yes. I can definitely tell the difference between a 0.5 and a 0.6. I don't even like this 0.5. Honestly, the only reason I got it, like I said, is because my 0.6 broke. But you can definitely tell the difference between a 0.5 and 0.6. Like I said, for some reason. The 0.6 is a lot sharper than any other one, any of the other ones that I've used. And I have quite a few of them, you know, and to me, the 0.6, it grabs the hair better. It locks it in, makes it more secure, makes the lock more firm. Um, and that's another thing I try to tell people when you make lock extensions, make them firm. If you want them to be durable and pliable throughout the uh, life of your lock extensions, Make them firm off rip because if you make them all squishy and thin and soft feeling, then when you start to manipulate them, wash them and all that kind of stuff, they're just going to fall off. Because when I first started making them, like I wasn't that good. <laughs> I wasn't that good. I was not good at all. I had to pray for some help. 
and uh, but it wasn't until I started making them for other people that I had to be better because I did not want to send out a product that was subpar, you know, and that people weren't appreciative of. So, so far, all the people that I've made lock extensions for absolutely love them, you know, and I that's what I like to do is just good quality. But yeah, 0.6, 0 0.60 mm is the best one. Quality, yes, it is about quality. And that's what I do. I make my I make sure when I was making lock extensions, I make sure to make them firm. Because if you know real strong, healthy locks are firm, they still get squishy, you know, when they take in water, but the actual integrity of the lock is intact. You see that? Firm. Firm, firm. And that's what you want. So that and I've had these in for three years now. Three years. That's what you want. Uh -oh. Message. Don't you just hate when people send y'all these little chain messages on Facebook? Exactly. I just said you want to make them firm so when you finally wash it, they won't tear apart. And that's the truth. You do not want to go to a public swimming pool and, and look back in your lot floating in the water behind you. <laughs> You do not want that. You do not want to go to the beach, do you a Pamela Anderson moment, and then your lock fly off behind you in the water. You don't want that. So you have to make them firm off rip from the beginning. Make your locks firm. It doesn't mean it has to be thick. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to be like thick, but you just want to pack more hair in there. And that's why I say use a 0.6 because a 0.6 pulls that hair in there for whatever size lock extension you want to make. I can make Large ones to extra small to extra large ones with a 0.6 and have them all firm. And you can just like go like this. You can just go like boom, 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 like that. And they won't fall apart. That's what you want. Because over time, you know, they'll start to, you know, the more you manipulate them, the more you style them and all that kind of stuff. They'll start to weaken and you want to make sure it's the, the, the base, you know, it starts off strong. You want to make sure your locks start off strong. So over time, they'll last you for some years. Like I said, three years and counting. So I'm not going to just like purposely take these out, even though I did one today because I was really liking this one. I took this one on purpose. But um, I'm going to let these stay in here. Small would be <laughs> YouTube video. I'm on live. Bye. Bye. So, uh, let's say I just small, Whew, small ones. They were because I was like, I wasn't sure if I could get um, them to be strong and small because I, I thought that I would have to make it thicker in order for it to be stronger. But that's where the size of your crochet hook comes in. If you want to do small, then get you a 0.6 crochet hook. Get you enough hair. I don't have any loose hair. Otherwise, I would show you what I'm talking about. But get you enough hair and then you can just manipulate it to where you can pack that hair in and still keep that little skinny syndrome shape. Like I have pictures of me doing some extra small ones. Um, let's see if I can see it on my phone. Let's see. But yeah, I, I didn't I didn't do small ones until somebody asked me to. But don't be intimidated, sister. No, no. Sister locks are really, really tiny. I would call the ones that I did micro locks, maybe. I think I would call them micro locks. Yeah, I would say micro locks. Ain't no way I'm doing sister locks. I've seen them. They're beautiful, but oh, no. Okay, so these. These are the extra small ones that I made one time. They're really skinny. So, yeah, they were really, oh, well. I want y'all see that thigh. But yeah, they were really skinny. But they were firm. Yeah, micro locks. That's what they were. Sister locks are super, super skinny. Now, this is a picture of them. I think these are the same ones. They're a picture of them that I had made for somebody. I don't know if it's, but yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, they're beautiful. I can't remember where I made those for. They're beautiful. And I've made some, let me see. Oh, this is a picture of me when I had like the brown. You you remember I told y'all earlier, like you can do all kinds of stuff with your lock extensions. You can like feather them. I was feeling myself that day. <laughs> That's what that uh, Snapchat filter. That's when I discovered Snapchat. But you can feather them, make them like flow back like that. Yeah, see, you can you can accomplish that size Akasha. If you get, like I said, get that point six, and you um, and you pack in that hair, and then you just go to manipulating it with that crochet hook, you can do it. What brand can you dye? Making actually, let me type it in. Making styles. W uh, W. Let's see. I'm gonna type it in here. Styles.com. When you go to makingstyles.com. Get, they have an option for unprocessed virgin hair or something like that. It says unprocessed black or unprocessed natural black, something like that. Excuse me. So when you, um, if you go to makingstyles.com, black owned business, I've used some of their hair before to make other people's lock extensions, good quality hair. So if you go there and get the unprocessed black or something like that, that'll be easier to dye. It'll be much easier to dye. That brand, I've used his and her. That is another brand that I believe you can dye. I have not tried to dye that one, but I believe you can. As long as it's 100% human hair, you can dye it. So I've been on here for an hour. I just got to talking. Time went by so quick. I was supposed to be on a treadmill. You're welcome, Audrey. What time is it? Ooh, it's 10 30. I'm tired. But I gotta get on a treadmill. I'm, I'm doing my two and a half miles every single day. <sighs> Trying to be a little bit more consistent. Mm -hmm. What other questions y'all got for me? I don't mind answering. I'm gonna try to put some more videos on here and stuff too, y'all. So tell me what y'all want to talk about. I be I do some styles and stuff with my hair, but y'all don't really never see them. I be taking them out. It's one style that I got from. Um, her name was uh, Grizzle Rocks Locks. I said, put your, <laughs> put my phone on the treadmill. Trust me, that treadmill's so loud, you're gonna be like, hang up, hang up. <laughs> the curly locks uh, done with the flexi. Oh, speaking of that, corn, he said the curly locks done with the flexi rods and perm rods look so good. Let me show you something, because I've done that before. I just got lazy. No, Audrey, I don't use any products. Honestly, the only thing I use is, um, like I said earlier, was oil and water. That's it. This is how it looked, y'all, when I had did the flexi rods. And No, yeah, I did flexi rods. See that? That's on my Instagram. Oh, yeah, follow me. At Tammy D. Shine. Yeah, this is flexi rod. It's a beautiful curl. Oh, I was cute in that one. I like that. Go ahead, girl. Let me see. Oh, and this is what it looked like, too, before. That was the before. See that, coin? See, that's the before. <laughs> I flexi ride them jokers up. That was the before, and that was the result after. I'm going to get back into doing my hair. I've been so lazy. I don't do nothing to it but put it up. But yeah. Oh, that was real cute. I might do that again. <sighs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. How long did I leave the rods in? It, I, I, oh, it, was, some, it was definitely overnight. So I want to say maybe I finished it probably about 8 o'clock the day before. Left them in to maybe noon the next day. It had to have been some hours. And I call myself sitting under the dryer. Too. Yeah, I think I sat under the dryer for a little bit. So I had to kind of expedite that. Otherwise, you would have to leave it in a little bit longer. But it was so hard to sleep. I had a crick in my neck like the next day. So I, I definitely took those out. Yeah, I think I had washed my hair. Let's see. 
even if I didn't wash it, sometimes I've washed my hair and rolled it. But even, even if I did, I just took a spray bottle to dampen it to make sure it's saturated good enough so that it can take the curl. So yeah, I did dampen it. It was either soaked. Actually, I think I washed it because it don't take long for the water to run off these locks. So um, I think I washed it. See, this is when I was telling y'all I, I did the purple. So yes, girl, I know about that purple. <laughs> I know about the purple. I did the purple. God, I'm still up. Oh my God. I don't know. I think, I don't know if YouTube is going to cut me off in like four seconds. How long can people be on this thing? Okay, we're still going. We just hit an hour. All right. But I'm going to get off here because I really do need to work out. I'm going to show y'all some more styles. Actually, I'm just going to come on here one day and start styling it again. What's another cute one? I had saw this on a, um, oh, that's my dress. Come on. I had saw this hairstyle on like Instagram. So basically I put it in a high ponytail. I think I crisscrossed it in, okay, I two strand twisted it, crisscrossed it in the back and put it in a high ponytail to the left. So your girl was doing some things before I got lazy and stopped doing my hair. I was doing some things, so. And what else, let me see. <sighs> it was some other hairstyle I had on here. Oh, I did that too. Oh, okay. That's that. Oh, that was a cute dress. I like, I still got that dress. I live with my old dog. Okay, come back to the hair. Okay, so I did that too. Can't see it because I keep. Um... Okay, you never know how you look until you look back on your pictures, boy. Okay. No, I am now, I am in Jacksonville, Florida. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I was in Arkansas, which is where I'm from, born and raised, but I moved to Jacksonville, Florida a year ago. Sorry, I lost my crochet hook. Put that in there. Ooh. Yep, that was a, what was it called? A, um, what is it called? What do you call it? Barrel roll. That was like a barrel roll bun or something like that. Got real creative with these things. That's why I say locks are very versatile. They really are. I did crinkly. Let's see if I got a picture. Uh, this is when, okay, I gotta have the show in my office, but you see that? That's a crinkle. I did a crinkle in that one. I literally just, um, come on, go back up. There we go. I literally just braided it, left it in overnight, or maybe even a couple days. Because if you braid it up cute enough, you can leave them in there and, and go outside with the braids. I've done that. I do that. I braid it up cute so that if I want to go out with big old plaits, I go out with big old plaits. And then when I take them out, pow, another style. Um, my, my locks, let me see if I don't know how to show you. Okay. Sorry, I got on my little night shirt. But my locks, they've actually shortened over the years because I, um, I was like maintenance them, but they are probably, I don't know if you can see that. Like I've shortened, I've cut some and uh, cause they were really, really long when I first put them in. I would say maybe, maybe they're about maybe 20, I don't know, maybe like 20 something inches. I was trying to see if I can show you, sorry. I don't know if this helps. So put it like this. So they're this long. They come to my boob. So probably mid back. Let's see. Oh, okay. Tailbone. All right. So my locks are here now. I don't know if you can see that. They are there. Okay. Ooh, hot. How long that was you need? Oh, thank you. How long did it take to make your set? <sighs> Mine, it took me, oh, months. Because <laughs> remind you, when I first started this, started my locks, I, um, 
I was bald, like literally bald. So as my hair was growing, I was making my lock extensions. So I would say it took me about three months. And that's about the amount of time that it took me to grow about a couple inches of hair or something like that. About three months. I think my hair grew like an inch or something. I don't know. But it took me about three months. Probably a little bit longer because as I was doing it, I would put some in, make some more, put some in. So I would say about three months. Um, Do I ever palm roll or interlock? Yes. When I want to do something quick, I'll palm roll it real quick, retwist it, and do a little quick style. But if I want it to last, I have to interlock it. And I started interlocking the back the other day. I just I haven't made my way up to the top yet. But yeah, I prefer interlocking. Interlocking works much, much better for me because it lasts a lot longer. Um, yeah, I need to go get my fan. I got this big old Encara fan that I ordered off of Etsy. Oh, thank you. You have to come on here often. We love you and you're really kind and informed. Thank you. I try to be, I believe in supplying people with all the information they need to do whatever they need to do with it. I know some people charge. I do not for information. Um, I'll prepare you or tell you whatever you need to know to have a successful journey if you choose to make your own. Um, so yeah, my locks, hmm. I honestly don't know what people would consider this size. Okay, if I was making these, I would say these are like a, to me, like a medium. So it's like a point, I don't know. I have to get a thing. Hold on, well, hold on, let me go get my, um, Okay, sorry. I got a tape measure. Some people measure them by the width or the girth of them. So if I put it on the centimeter side and just lay it where the one is, you could say it's, I don't know, point one. Let's see, one, two, three, like point four. I don't know why. So I would say medium. To me, I think they're small, but there's some that can go smaller than this. So I would say medium for mine. Actually, let me see how long they are. Give you an actual number. I'm just doing this from scalp to. And they're all different lengths, so but this is just an idea. This one is about 22 inches. So I would say between 20, well, between 22 and 26. Some of them are longer, depending on where they are in my head. So, yeah. What else do I want to know? Hmm. I'm going to come on here and probably do some more styles. Um, you know, I'd rather do lives because I don't feel like recording and editing and putting all the effects and stuff in there. I don't feel like doing that. I mean, I could. I just don't feel like doing that. But, um, yeah, I'm going to get off here, y'all, because I need to go jump on this treadmill, go to sleep, and get ready for work tomorrow, which I really ain't got to do much for that because, thankfully, I work from home. So I'll just literally be walking back in this room. I think I kind of want to get a green screen or something. I thought I could do it with this wall, but it's a textured wall, so you can tell, you know, you can't really, it's not really a smooth surface. But anyway. Thank you all so much for tuning in to my channel, asking me questions. Do I like lock jewelry? I do. I don't have any. When I first started my locks, you would think I was a little Christmas tree. I was so excited. I had all kinds of stuff in my head. But it's time for grass and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I just haven't put any in here. I want to, though. I may get some leads or something some gold pieces to put back in here. Um, I do like lock jewelry. I just haven't used it in a while. Um, but I am going to, though. I'm going to make it a point to get some more because it is really pretty. Um, I like wearing gold. So I, mean, I think it'll look really cute with a lot of gold accessories and then some gold lock jewels and stuff like that. 
even some of the shells that people use. I think those shells are cute. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in with me or um, listening to me ramble at some points. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, feel free. Y'all can email me. My information is out there. Y'all can message me in the comments. I make sure that I try to respond to people in a timely manner because I really do appreciate y'all watching my channel. I know I don't have a whole bunch of special effects going on, which I think are so cool and so nice. I don't feel like doing that. I just thank y'all for tuning in, watching me, and listening to me, though. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank y'all so much. Be blessed. Be safe. Be kind. And um, be vigilant. You know, And feel free, like I said, to ask me any questions. Uh, I'm always here. Well, I always got my phone on me. So, but thank y'all so much for tuning in. I love y'all. I appreciate your support and, you know, continue to tune in and, and shoot me some ideas. If you want me to talk about something, show y'all something, um, I'm more than happy to do that. So yeah, just let it, let, let us just know. <laughs> thank y'all and good night. That's what would happen if I actually edited this video and had some special effects. Good night. Thank y'all. Bye. <laughs>